And this is Genesis 3 and verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Kal halal yahawah b'ashem yahawah shai b'ashem kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I've called this lesson, Rescued from the Belly of the Beast. That's what we want to speak a little bit about today and make some connections here because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is written in here for our learning. And right, I get drawn, dragged back to this, these two chapters here, Genesis 3 and 4. They're really set up virtually the whole of what else the, the Bible's got to speak about. It's, it's really, a, a lot of it is encapsulated within these chapters here. So that's probably why I keep getting dragged back to it, no matter what I'm speaking about. It's, even if I don't refer to it, it's in my mind what happened in these two chapters here. Because we're getting ready for a really dramatic, spectacular rescue. There's many times when people are, uh, what do they call them, when there's a ransom for well, kidnapping, I think is the word I'm looking for. And they say, oh, there's going to be, there's a, a rescue attempt. Well, this isn't going to be an attempt. This is actually going to happen, whether you believe it or not. Yahweh Shai is about to come and rescue his people. Our power, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, his name is Yahweh Shai. His name means Redeemer, High Priest and Mediator in the heavens for his people. He's paid the ransom with his blood this week of uh, sort of commemorating and thinking on this time of year, the Passover. We get much go through our mind regarding what took place back then. And so he's getting ready. He's coming back, our Savior. Redeemer, he's paid that ransom, the power of his blood and his people. That's who we are, the true children of Israel. They're calling us bywords. Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the true Israelites, the people of the book. We're dispersed, we're the diaspora spread to the four corners of the earth. And so his return for his people is just around the corner, the remnant, the elect of Israel. So much of this turmoil is taking place. The, the tumult that we read about in the scriptures. I know Jacob's trouble is just around the corner. Let's go back to this. Genesis 3. Let's read 1. Now the serpent, who was a man, was more subtle, representing a nation. It's the Edomites, just so we understand. That's who was in the Bible. That's this serpent gone through various transformations but it's him it's him we know who you are wanting our people to call you the white man this is the progenitor right here any beast of the field which was let's read the whole thing genesis 3 and 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god yahweh power had made and he said unto the woman yea Hath the Most High said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? I just want to jump to verse 13. Well, of course, we know the story here. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Of course, he was the most subtle. So beguiling, that's what he's about. That's his very nature. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. We just want to make a point later on in the lesson. So that's why I'm just using these verses here to set it up somewhat. We're speaking about being rescued from the belly of the beast. And we started out talking about the serpent. So let's go straight to Jonah here. Don't read Jonah much. Big lesson here in, in Jonah. Jonah. Chapter 2, let's just read 1 and 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God, Yahweh his power, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, and he heard me 
out of the belly of hell. This was the condition that he was in for those fools who were thinking about an actual place. I don't know where they claim it is, where you're going to go. This is Jonah speaking. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. So we're like in this situation to where we are right now. We're in a hellish condition. This really is hell. How we're living, the children of Israel, we've really been put to task in so many different uh, captivities and slavery. And now we're serving under this wretched, this brute of a man, the lowest of the low, Esau, Edom, the white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. He's running the earth right now. It's, this is his, his kingdom. And he's surely taken peace from the earth referred to as death and hell where are we going to go next let's, let's just get that one in Daniel 12 speaks about what we, we're coming up to and at that time this speaks of Jacob's trouble is also is that Jeremy 30 and around about 6 or 7 and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people not for everyone and there shall be as be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered that's what we're looking forward to everyone that is that shall be found written in the book that's that truth imprinted in our mind oh to be a part of that number let's go straight to Speak some more in this trouble here. Let's get the Apocrypha. Second Ezra 15. Let's start at 47. Second Ezra 15. Let's start at 47. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore, saith the Most High, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So there's a portion of the earth. In fact, the whole earth has joined with this man. Which man? The Edomite, the devil in the scriptures, wanting you to call him white. There's no such biblical nationality. He's the Edomite. The next time you pick up your Bible and you see where it says either Idumia, which is a great, the, the Greek way of saying Edom, or Edomite, Esau, Edom. That's who he is. It's the white man. That's him. We know who you are. And so a bunch of our folk have joined with the other 17 nations, including this nation, and have committed all manner of whoredoms. So this is what this is speaking to here. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower. When the heat shall arise that is sent over thee. Thou shalt be weakened as a poor woman with stripes. And as one chastised with wounds. So that the mighty and lovers shall not be able to receive thee. Would I with jealousy have so proceeded against thee, said the Lord. If thou hadst not odd always slain my chosen halting the stroke of thine hands and saying over there dead when thou was drunken maybe we'll go back and get some more of that in a moment but there's a payback recompense is coming and the rescue has already started i know you're watching let's stay with the apocrypha we're gonna get Baruch. Baruch 2. Let's go from 1 to 5. Therefore the Lord hath made good his word which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judge Israel and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Israel and Judah to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem according to the things which were written in the law of Moses. So we've been getting it, we've been getting it, but we're coming to the end of our chastisement by our father, that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. Moreover, he had delivered them to be in subjection, meaning under rule to all the kingdoms that are round about us. 
to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where the Lord had scattered them. Thus we were cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against the Lord our God, our, our power, and have not been obedient unto his voice. So that's the answer to why are we in the situation that we find ourselves. Before coming into this truth, you would ask yourself, why on earth everything I try is not working? It's just so restricted. Every little thing you try to do, you make an honest day's living, you start a business, you start a family, you start, it doesn't matter what you do, it's just failure all around the corner. And you want to know why. Well, there's your reason. We turn our backs. We are those chosen people. And so we're disobedient, so we're being chastised. It's simple, that's the reason. Where next? Isaiah 49. Let's just read a few verses here, 49, 25, and 26. But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Watch out. The situation is getting ready to turn on its head. Verse 26, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood. See, they love blood. They drink it. They, they've been going around the world slaying a lot of murder, pillage, rape. That's all they've done since they've gone into power. Who are we speaking about? It's that white man, that devil that the Bible speaks of. He's the one who's taken peace from the earth. As with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy saviour. And thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. That's our power right there. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Where next? Revelation 13. We normally, or I should speak for myself, jump to this prime verse here. I speak to this under the skin technology, but before we go there, let's get. Let's go from 6, Revelation 13. Let's start at 6. And he opened his mouth. See who, see who we're speaking about. In blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. That's what this man has done since he got into power. That's what the Bible tells us. He's covered over all the images of our power. All of those that dwell in heaven. He's put himself in their stead. This is the height of blasphemy. He's the only one able to perform this task. And so there is no place of redemption for him. Where were we? Verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, who are Hebrew Israelites, Psalms 50 and 5 and elsewhere, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. That's what's happening right now. People have got these pictures up. It's in their books. It's on their, it's everywhere. In their cars, all over the place. People have got this man's image up. They worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Listen to this. Verse 9. If any man have an heir, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the situation is going to turn itself around. And it's already begun. Those who have succumbed to this man, you've got his image up. You're worshipping this man. If you keep doing that, you're going to be damned along with him. You see? And so you will have to be reborn back into the kingdom, into your right mind. This is for those who understand what's going on here. While we're here, we have, of course have to read this. Verse 16, Revelation 13, 16. And he causes all, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive this under the skin technology. We know that to be a karagma, this incision. That's where they're heading in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or save, sell, save he that had this under the skin technology, or the name of this beast. Remember, we started out speaking about that serpent. It's the same man, it's the same nation, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, verse 18. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 
and his number is 603 score and six. A bunch of lessons have been done on this and we see it coming to fruition. It's happening as we speak. People are already being told you can't receive your benefits from the government unless you do this or you do that. Psalms 46. No, where am I? No, we're going to read Psalms 27 first. Let's do that. Psalms 27, 3 to 5. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Which rock is that? Let's get some more on this rock. 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go from one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Remember, this is a reference to Moses leading the children of Israel. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the seas. Of course, it's a wilderness as they were fleeing from the Egyptians. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And listen to verse 4 here. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Yahawashai Hamashiach the anointed one. That's the rock that David is speaking about. Hide me, hide me, hide me under that rock. We can get back to 2nd Ezra 15. Let's get a few more verses here before we wrap up. 2nd Ezra 15. Let's go from 54. Set forth the beauty of thine Countenance, the reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom. Therefore shalt thou receive recompense. It's what we're talking about, payback. Because this rescue is about to take place. Like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Even so shall the Most High do unto thee, and shall deliver thee unto mischief. Thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall, fall through with the sword. Thy city shall be broken down, and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. They that be in a mountain shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood, seeing as you, you love it so much, for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. We see strings of these people in Babylon the Great, which is America, lining up. All their food stumps are running out. All of their welfare is all going, it's all going tits up. Though as unhappy shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. And in the past passage, they shall rush on the idle city and shall destroy some portion of thy land and consume part of the glory and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. And thou shalt be cast down by them as stubble and they shall be unto thee as fire and shall consume thee, and thy cities, thy land, and thy mountains shall, thy woods, all thy woods, and thy fruitful trees shall they burn up with fire. Thy children shall they carry away captive. And look what thou hast, they shall spoil it and mar the beauty of thy face. That's what, what you've got coming to you, Esau, Edom. And all those nations are listing, uh, what's that, Psalms 83. And of course, a percentage in Babylon the Great, two-thirds, two out of every three Hebrew Israelites are going to be destroyed alongside this man. Where were we going to go to, to wrap up? Psalms 46. All this madness is about to come to an end. It's just... And 11 verses here, let's read. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, 
will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of the most high the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved the heavenly father shall help her and that right early the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. Verse 9, he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot with the fire. Be still and know that I am the Most High. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. That's our power right there. It's about to make a dramatic entrance into this atmosphere. And those who find something funny, often referring to, oh, this sky god, been hearing about him where is he you soon find out this whirlwind of uh, uh, you call it dust confusion madness with your seedless uh, this and that uh, gmo foods humans you can't say what is the the gender you can't say a woman gives birth all types of madness robots instead of people that's what babal means that's what we started speaking about this serpent wallowing in dust and confusion that's his role in the most high's movie so i won't stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be even listen to rescued from the belly of the beast shalom until the next one